why Argentina are my World Cup favourites. Let's start off with a system that coach Lionel Scaloni is using. He's using a very flexible 4-4-2. So the front two of that is normally a Lionel Messi, Lautaro Martinez partnership. And behind that, is a bank of four. Left wing is likely to be Alexis McAllister of Brighton. A double pivot of Rodrigo de Paul and Leandro Paredes. And on the right side, Angel Di Maria will provide that source of creativity. And what I like about this is it's centred around giving Lionel Messi, Argentina's best player, of course, the flexibility to drop into pockets of space that he wants to go into. This flat 4-4-2 can morph into a 4-4-2 diamond where Messi drops into a number 10 position behind a front two of then Lautaro and Angel Di Maria. And he can then create from those pockets of space in the number 10 position and act as a kind of facilitator for Argentina's attacks. But also there's flexibility for Di Maria to do that more creative role from the right side of the flat 4-4-2 with Messi then higher up with Lautaro causing problems in and around the box. So Messi is the focal point and the rest of the players then mould and adapt around him. Especially when he's in that number 10 position, the likes of DePaul and McAllister on the sides of that diamond can then push on in advance of Messi too and provide extra runners for him to create for. And knowing that Leandro Paredes will sit at the base. So this system on the ball is very nice. And off the ball, the flat 4-4-2 is quite rigid and the structure is strong. Very compact, mid-block. That is very tough to break down and makes Argentina defensively quite good. That defensive structure that Argentina have is a bit in contrast to Brazil, who play a few more attackers in their lineup, a few more flair players. For example, they'll have a 4 3 3 system, and one of the midfield three will be Neymar, and then a front three in front of that. That isn't the same level of intensity that Argentina bring defensively and off the ball, and that is where I think Argentina may have the slight edge on Brazil. Looking at the personnel, let's start off with the back. Emi Martinez is an excellent shot stopper. He can pull out some fantastic saves and he's quite consistent with how reliable he is in saving shots as well. Um, and then you look at the defence. Christian Romero, I've been very impressed with him since he's joined Spurs. He's grown to be one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League and he's a leader of that defence. In that Copa America final where Argentina beat Brazil, Romero was one of the most impressive players on the pitch. He sniffed out several chances due to his reading of the game and making last-ditch tackles and interceptions in the box. One weakness is maybe Nicolas Otamendi at centre-back alongside Romero, but he has actually done well for Benfica this season and got them top of a group, including PSG in the Champions League this season. Then in midfield, a bank of four, this is where Argentina excel, particularly. They've got so much intensity, work rate and aggression there with McAllister, with Rodrigo de Paul, with Paredes. And then uh, Di Maria is a bit less so, but it's those three provide the platform for Di Maria, Messi and Lautaro to do their stuff because of how intense they are and how good they are defensively. And then, as I say, up front, Messi and Lautaro do have a good understanding and good partnership together. Messi often picks out Lautaro's runs. Off the bench, Argentina actually have weapons. Paolo Dybala, in my opinion, is the most dangerous attacking substitute in the whole tournament. If you look at his games for Roma this season, he's actually been a pretty good impact in most of them. His fitness will be key and can be a game-changing substitute for Argentina. And then you've got Enzo Fernandez as well. He's had a fantastic season for Benfica. He provides that extra passing range, ability to slice apart a defence, switch play, control games uh, a lot better. Uh, and that's, again, another useful substitution. And Julian Alvarez. This guy doesn't need many chances to score. And that's what I like about him. He's very clinical and he's very similar in that way to an old Argentine striker, Sergio Aguero. Again, that is a very useful substitute to have on the bench to poach a goal if it's needed. So Argentina have three very good substitutes there. And then, even if they want to seal off a game, Guido Rodriguez is a fantastic ball winner off the bench. and He can come on and seal up a game for them if they need to get the result over the line. Those are the reasons why I think Argentina will win the 2022 World Cup.